John Tyndall left rural Ireland to become one of the best-known scientists of the Victorian era. However, he began his career as a surveyor at his hometown of Leylinbridge and would continue to survey for eight years in Ireland and England before getting a teaching job at Queenwood College in Hampshire, England. Here he met Edward Frankland, an aspiring chemist, and after just a year at Queenwood, the two friends travelled to Marburg in Germany to study for PhDs. Frankland studied with Robert Bunsen, while Tyndall worked with Hermann Knoblauch on diamagnetism, where some of the results he obtained helped him make his name. Soon Tyndale was translating and editing foreign articles for Philosophical Magazine, and then he began a long career at the Royal Institution by giving lectures on topics related to the natural world, such as heat, sound, light, the structure of slate, and the motions of glaciers. He also carried out many experiments, including experiments on signalling in fog, and this led to him demonstrating the use of a foghorn to Queen Victoria. In addition to sound, Tyndall carried out experiments where he passed light or heat through gaseous or liquid samples. From some of these experiments he was able to confirm the germ theory of Louis Pasteur. And from other experiments he could show how scattering of light by particles could produce the blue colour of the sky. And in fact the strong connection that he had to Europe and the natural world is further evidenced by his regular mountaineering trips to the Alps, where he was even in a group that made the first ascent of the Weisshorn. However, his greatest legacy may be his work which showed how gases in the atmosphere can have an important greenhouse effect. Thus, writing in 1863, he warned very clearly how changes in atmospheric composition can have a huge impact on the climate. In addition to his many contributions to scientific journals and magazines, Tyndall published many books based on his lectures. This helped him become wealthy enough so that when, in his 50s, he married Louisa Hamilton, daughter of Lord Claude Hamilton, he was able to enjoy his twilight years living in two houses that he had had built, one in England and one in Switzerland, thus completing a remarkable rise from his modest roots. Thank you so much for listening to the very end and I hope to see you again sometime soon.